Hey there guys. Today I'm going to show you how I built the pump house that powers my rainwater harvesting system. I've been talking about it for a while and now it is finally at a stage where it is actually serving some purpose. Uh, it took a little bit longer than I was anticipating but as you can tell I had a very complex uh, color pattern. A lot of grays and silvers and galvanizing colors that I really had to blend and I think I got the scheme just right as you can tell. So now I'm going to show you how I built it and then I, at the end I'll cover some of the things I didn't cover during the build and what I'm going to be doing on it next. So real quick before I start putting the walls up on this build, you may be wondering why I don't have any footage of pouring the slab. Well, I will show you some footage at the end when I pour a little footer, a doorstep footer right there, and I'll show the complete process of how I did this, but just in a smaller format. And the reason for that is because this pump house had three lifespans. Once when I was building my house, when the framing was going on, I just made a little slab for a pump and a pressure tank wasn't covered and then about six months after that I just expanded that a little bit so I could have some little walls out of some scrap material and a roof and now 14 years later I've decided to make it a bigger more proper uh, house so that is what that discoloration is in the middle those were just the previous slabs and it was just going to be too much to film this and have my hands all concretey so I figured I'll show you that at the end the process of doing a slab which is very simple but with that said, now I'm going to show you how I frame the walls, sheet it, and everything that follows. So the first step I've taken to assemble these walls was to cut some treated lumber that is going to act as the baseboards or base plates of the walls. And I have sized them according to the outer dimensions of the slab. So this board and this board I have cut to be one inch shorter than the outer dimensions of the slab. And the reason for that is because I want to allow a half inch uh, reveal all the way around the slab so that when I add my OSB plywood or sheeting, uh, it's going to sit flush with the slab so that when I uh, add my weather wrap, there's not going to be anything overhanging for water to infiltrate uh, from below. And that'll make a little bit more sense later. And now what I'm going to do is use a mallet and mark where my concrete bolts are so that these walls will be able to be affixed to the slab. All the wall base plates are test fit and you can see there is that little reveal all the way around. Again that is just to allow for the plywood to be flush with that when I eventually wrap it. Now I will take these and build walls and then start setting them up. Now for a little mid-framing update so that this kind of makes sense. You see I got three walls in a place, all of which I built on the ground and just simply tilted them up and then affixed them together. 
This one right here, because that's where the plumbing is going to go, I am going to frame into place. That way I have to disconnect the water as few times as possible. I will have to disconnect it later, uh, because right now when I can frame around it, I don't want to disconnect it. And then the larger opening over there, that's obviously where the door is going to go, but I don't have it framed out yet because I am not sure where I want to align it because I'm going to align it with the corrugations on the roofing metal that I'm going to sheet this in. And then uh, after that, I'll sheath it and start adding roofing and all the other stuff. <laughs> So I think I'm gonna get a little bit of a rain delay here. We got a storm coming in. But one thing I wanted to point out uh, that you may be wondering about, you've probably seen on construction sites where they'll have framework and they'll have diagonal bracing. That is to make the whole framework rigid. Uh, but I'm not adding diagonal bracing because once you add sheathing in the form of plywood on the outside, uh, that accomplishes the uh, same goal of adding shear strength and it'll be incredibly strong. Right now, You'll notice it's all wobbly that's totally normal but once i add the uh, plywood or osb on the outside it's gonna get very very rigid Ooh, and it's coming Going pretty good One quick thing I wanted to note is that you will notice some cracking on the ends of these boards, especially where screws or nails are going through near the edge of the board. That is pretty typical and can be alleviated by using some construction brackets. But in this case, it's such a small structure and I'm gonna be sheeting this in OSB and that is really going to give this ultimate strength. But towards this one, I'm gonna show you a quick little thing that you can do to alleviate this crack with some clamps, glue, and a screw, and just to keep that from growing uh, over the long term.
So right now I'm going to get you caught up on a few of the things that I did not show. Uh, most obviously the doorway, I framed that out. And the reason I didn't show that on video is because I did it at night when it was a lot cooler. And uh, oftentimes at night, uh, it just does not translate that well on camera. And the framing is simple enough, so I'll show you some clips uh, of what it looks like on the inside. And then the other thing you'll notice is that uh, you'll see a lot of overspray. I decided to do spray paint for all of the eaves versus working a brush in there. And that is why you'll see all that uh, gray spray paint overspray. As for the doorway on the outside, you'll notice it has a little steel protrusion. And what that is, is just uh, that's going to protrude from the roofing a little bit to add a little bit of extra shade coverage as well as weathering. And then I sealed the threshold of that with some butyl uh, door and window weather seal. And uh, this steel actually I got from my friend Danny. I don't remember what it was for, but it was like a six inch by two inch steel angle uh, by like eighth inch, like almost uh, bed frame uh, thickness. And uh, so once the roofing goes on or the siding goes on, you'll be able to see that protrude. I think it'll look pretty cool. And then the inside of this, is just normal. I used one by threes to create a threshold and I don't know exactly what I'm going to do for the door yet, but uh, it's all pretty standard stuff. So right now I just finished grading all of the ground around the pump house and you can see it is pretty much finished with a few exceptions. Uh, you'll notice I have not made a door yet, but I've decided that I kind of want to do an interesting thing for the door. So that's going to be in the next video. But right now I'm going to get behind the camera and just kind of walk you through it. I'm going to show you some shelves I built inside and try to cover some of the things I didn't show during the kind of build portion of this. Now the first thing I'll cover is the grading aspect since I just mentioned uh, how I graded all the ground around the pump house. And the reason for that is you will notice that this concrete slab right here is quite a bit higher than the pump house slab. And the reason for that is because when I originally poured this, the smaller pump house slab about 15 years ago, this is just the slope of the land and I saw no reason to build all of that up just to make these level. So the grading of this allows for drainage or water runoff to go out here and behind as well as here and behind on that direction so no water will be pooling around the pump house. And the next thing I wanted to address that you may be wondering about is that I do not have any ventilation underneath the eaves or on the roof. And the reason for that is because I am planning a passive solar project that's going to go on the southern exposure of this, which is the backside of this and i just wanted to coordinate the openings i'm going to be cutting for that with the ventilation that i will have for obviously summertime so this doesn't get too hot in here and i'm going to do that when i get around to doing the door uh, because obviously right now it doesn't need any ventilation because there's a big giant hole here and before i take you inside i will also point out that i built this little box on the outside to protect the pipes and i'll show you a clip of that right now um of what it looks like how it mounts and then we'll go inside a simple little aluminum box out of some scrap diamond plate that i had riveted it together and then i added some carriage bolts with some angle on the inside that kind of hold it in place it's pretty secure and then i just use some of that butyl tape that i used around the door to seal around this pipe and that is pretty much it um, this will eventually get some insulation on the inside, but for now, it'll just at least keep the sun off. And moving on to the inside, the first thing you'll notice is that I have built shelving on the back wall with obviously a little area cut out to allow for a switch out of a pressure tank. And those shelves will eventually hold uh, my spare PVC fittings and uh, my spare pump that I have that is the exact same pump that is what I'm currently using. So if I ever have problems with it, I can simply change it out and uh, I'll end up storing whatever else in here. 
Um, and then the other thing that I did not show, as you'll notice, I added uh, some foam insulation on the top as well as a light. That is all powered via the power that comes in from the concrete slab. You can see it comes in from where the original slab was, so this is definitely not the ideal situation. But that was in a galvanized pipe and then I just used PVC to wrap around it. And then I ran it into a half inch electrical uh, Schedule 80 PVC up here to a light switch that powers an outlet up there. I just have a shop light up there to give it better lighting inside. Uh, let's see if I can focus on that. And that uh, switch is obviously controlled with that switch, or uh, that outlet is. And then I also have power running over here. And this is what powers the pump. I did plan on having this hardwired, but I started thinking about it. And for me to do any work out here on the pump, I would have to unhook the hard wiring from there. And I figured if I just wired up an extension cord, ran it through an outlet and put some special colors uh, so that people would know that it's not a regular extension cord. If I ever need to work on the pump, I can simply just unplug it here. And I figured that would be kind of the best case scenario. And eventually my whole water filter setup will go along that wall. And I am kind of debating how much I'm going to insulate these inside walls, if at all, because we just don't get that cold. Uh, but again, as I get to the passive solar project that will be pumping in air from there, I will also be thinking about the ventilation for cooling. But again, you'll see that in the next video. And I think that is it. And you can see the other shop lights I have in here just for the camera to see. All right, well, I think that's going to conclude this part of the pump house project. I say part because uh, this is going to be more than just the building of the pump house. I mentioned that I'm going to be building a door as well as doing passive solar. And eventually I'm going to be adding the water filter and also doing some backup, uh, like a backup solar thing so I can run my uh, house water we have a power outage which out here in the rural land we uh, oftentimes do uh, as for the door uh, I decided to make that a dedicated project because I started thinking about uh, instead of just adding a regular old door I thought it might be cool to do something a little bit more unique with like an interesting latch mechanism um, or something like that so not exactly sure but uh, uh, you know, maybe it'll give me the opportunity to add some color because obviously my gray uh, scheme just permeates everything. Uh, but there is hope because if you look at my shop, there is a little splotch of red with the first aid uh, cabinet. So anyway, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm going to do a red door, uh, but who knows? I may get crazy with it. Uh, as for uh, things I did not cover, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that you will notice uh, some of you may be wondering uh, why the metal is all splotchy or kind of like uh, you know blemished well uh, i've done it or i've used that metal for a couple of projects for the uh, the goat barn and things like that and i mentioned it back then but the place where i got the metal is from tucson iron and metal up in tucson obviously and they have some piles it's called like rainbow remnants and it's uh, piles that may have blemishes or dings or dents cut to odd lengths and they're outside and when water gets in between the stacks it causes some of that uh, tarnishing of the galvanizing uh, but you know that's fine with me because I think it looks pretty cool regardless and obviously matches all the rest of my stuff uh, but I think that is pretty much it um, I think I mentioned all what's coming up with that so as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this. And remember, you can watch my stuff on Rumble and Odyssey. And uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to see similar random kind of project videos like this. And I will see you later. God bless.